Hallelujah, friends. God is our Father who is in heaven, and we say, Hallowed be your name, let your kingdom come. And we pray that may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, and we ask him to give us our day's provisions. And so God is good that he gives us our day's provisions, and he gives us an opportunity to be awake, to think, to meditate, to read his word, to think about his goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. And so we thank you, loving Father, that you have given us this opportunity. We pray that you bless us with your precious presence as we continue with your word in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, my friends, we thank God for every opportunity and we continue with the, his word. And of course, it's like, just like eating food, this daily bread. We talk about daily bread when we talk about drink, you know, water. I mean, so that we keep our bodies replenished, refreshed. And so actually you keep walking and with the strength. And so as we eat food and as we drink water, or to replenish our bodies, so equally so with the spirit. The food for the spirit is the word of God. And this word of God is found in his written Word And of course, people now store it variously, written word, and then there is the, those that have stored it orally. People read and there is, they keep listening to it. And so this time we continue with this written word that we read it together, think through together, pick our lessons that enable us to live. And of course, we live in accordance with God's regulations, God's rules, God is, you know, precepts. But also, as we please him up, we are supposed to be living here on earth as a pleasant lot among ourselves with the pleasant personalities, the words that we speak, you know, the actions that we exhibit. And so that as we please God, who is our father in heaven, but also please other people. And so that we live in harmony with God and harmony with others. Now, we have personalities that we have kept reading about, talking about, thinking about, meditating about. Now, in the book of Isaiah, which you have looked at, of course, the three uh, parts, Proto-Isaiah, the Tri-Isaiah, Twitter-Isaiah, and I've talked about this. Maybe for those that are listening for the first time, there's first Isaiah chapters 1 to 39, second Isaiah chapter 40 to 55, and the third Isaiah 56 to 66. But in these books, so we talked about prophet Isaiah himself, and then we talked about these three parts of prophet Isaiah, and now we pick more two personalities from there. And if another one comes, we shall talk about him. But now let me talk about a king called King Uzziah. And commonly known because when we read Isaiah chapter 6, at his call. This is where we read about this man most times. People read about him because of Isaiah's call in Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verse 1, where he mentions that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now, it is, that's the king that I want to talk about um, in the next few moments. That in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So in chapter 6 here, this was, in the year that King Uzziah died, I was looking for it, you know. Uh, to say the very words they were there in the Bible. That in the year that King Uzziah died, King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting in a throne lofty and exalted with the train of his robe filling the temple. Now we hear about this man, but who was he? What lessons can we learn from King Uzziah? Should we not know him about his death, that Isaiah saw the Lord? But well, there were some other things that actually King Uzziah did. And so King Uzziah comes as one of the personalities that I want to talk about. And so, Uzziah, I looked for the meaning simply that the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. For me, this is important. First of all, in the name, the Lord is my strength. Now, strength and the divine significance, for me, it makes news in my ears. 
as a person who needs strength every day when I wake up. Every moment, even lifting up my hand, I need strength. So the Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. So the name of Uzziah. Talking about the power of Yahweh, the power of God. Talking about the strength that God can supply in to us, I mean. So Uzziah, in some other portions, is called Azaria. God helped him. God raised him. God brought him into a place of prominence at an early age. An early age, 16 years, this is when he becomes king over Judah. Let us dive into 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 21. 2 Kings 14, 21. We find him there. All the people of Judah took Azaria. I've mentioned Azaria already. That talk about Uzziah and here they talk about Azaria, who was 16 years old and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. So here they are talking about Azaria, the name. And so in some other portions, it's called Azaria. Now, dive again into 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1. The Bible says, and all the people of Judah, you see the wording there, and all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father, Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. When they talk about slept with his fathers, meaning actually he died and was buried exactly at the burial place. So they say he slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and, his, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jehiliah to Jehiliah of Jerusalem. He did right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Messiah had done. And verse 5, he continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. This is a critical moment. This is a critical message, friends. 16 years and reigning for 52 years. They mention his father, his mother, I mean, Jehiria. And you know, in the vernacular, there are people's names that you have heard in the villages where we have grown up. You have heard about the name of all women. Someone called Kekiria, and uh, names like that, Kekiria, and you hear Kekiria, Kekiria. I mean, these are the people. They sought for biblical names. And so his mother was Shekiria, and the Bible says in verse 4 that he did right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that the father, his father Amaziah had done. And in verse 5, where the message is that he continued to seek God, in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. And I think this is at the center of the message in the life of Uzziah. That as long as he sought the Lord, God pro prospered him. And so reigning for 52 years was not a short time. He did well. It's very, very important. He did what was right before God. And so if there's any lesson that we actually pick from this man, Uzziah, we can, may not say that actually only his death that paved the way for Isaiah seeing God, but the Bible is talking about him here in the second Chronicles that he did what was right. And now that we are talking about personalities that, you know, Teach us some lessons, what you need to pick, what you need to learn. And when you hear that he did well, he did what was right before God. 
And the Bible talks about his reign as being one of the most prosperous in Judah. You have seen actually God prospered him in verse 5. So the Lord helped him in his requests, in his conquests. Whenever he went out, so blessings were upon him because he sought the Lord. Now, we have already seen, friends, that Uzziah was helped by God. He defeated many enemies. And they mentioned the names of those that actually Uzziah defeated. The Philistines, the Arabians, name them. Praise the Lord that actually we read about this. And during our time, we also have our own challenges that face us. But what do we need? We need God's help. Praise the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so we read in one of the Psalms. Uzziah committed himself to developing his kingdom. He built cities. We have read in one of the verses that he built, he raised up cities there. He built towers. Now, in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, we see much more that he did. In chapter 26, verses 6 to 11. Check there and see that actually Hosea did greatly. But unfortunately, the man Hosea, the Bible said that because of the prosperity, because of the successes, you know, success can bring success. But sometimes success can also bring failure. Success, I mean, you do well one time, do well. And then eventually something that develops in you because you are getting successful at a time. Uzziah became proud after becoming rich, after becoming rich, after becoming famous, after becoming very successful. He offended God. You see, there is beginning good. There is beginning well. There is doing fine. And you raise ladders. You go up. Success stories. Success stories. But the enemy, the devil, produces something in our heart. Because you have done so well, because you have succeeded, now the element of pride may come in. And so this man... Uzziah did something that was not right before God. Second Chronicles chapter 26, which I just read there, the pride that led Uzziah to do what was wrong. Second Chronicles 26, 16. Now the Bible says, but when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. And he was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. For he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of the incense. Then Azariah, the priest. Now this is another, another name. This is another person, the priest. Entered after him and with him 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. They opposed Uzziah the king, and said to him, it's not for you, King Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but to the, for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God. But Uzziah, you know, had done what was not right before God. So pride became his undoing. He went overboard. Then, friends, it is at this point, read on, because of the time we cannot read the whole of the whole portion, that was deemed, he was declared unclean on the grounds of leprosy, that he caught leprosy. From then, from this point, because he did what was not right, he lived apart from others. Of course, okay, lep leprosy was a separating disease. You could not move with the people. You could not sit with the people. You could not eat with the people. You could stay alone. And you know, this one was a king. But because of the leprosy, he couldn't. Now, the life of King Uzziah shows 
a tragic conclusion. The man that had done well, the man that God had prospered, but his, his conclusion was tragic to a promising life that was at the beginning. So he began a very promising legacy, a very promising reign as king of Judah, but ended tragically. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, verses 8, 18 to 19, Proverbs 16, 18 to 19, that pride goes before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 16, 18 to 19. So, listen to me again, that God at the beginning blessed Uzziah, age 16, with a good success. He grew to be a renowned and influential person. The sin of pride is a serious sin before God. Take note that the sin of pride is a serious sin before God because pride leads to humiliation. We have read in 2 Chronicles 26.16, Pride is an arrogant attitude. Pride led to Uzziah's downfall, as we read in 2 Chronicles 16, 19. So when anyone defies the Lord, he or she pays a price. So I have learned my own lesson from Uzziah. Not only what we read in Isaiah chapter 6, the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. But now here we also see that there are several great things that he did. Read more about his life. But this is important. The actual at the end, because of the arrogance, because of the pride, the end was tragic. Now there are some important things that I want to bring out one by one, and we shall end there. One, we have lessons that we pick, that we acquire, in here. So how do you manage success? It's the question that I'm putting to you. I'm putting it to myself because like I said at one moment, that what I say, I hear. What I'm saying, I'm talking with my conscious mind. How can I, how do I manage success? When you have succeeded today, when you have done so well in the business today, when you have done so well at work today, how do you manage yourself tomorrow? How do you manage yourself after you have done greatly well? Now, before God, in the life of Uzziah, he did so well, 52 years. But listen, because of the sin of pride, he overstepped. And here is the point. So the question that I leave with you, and I leave it with myself, is how do I manage success? Now, one other thing that you will find is that true and lasting success comes from God alone. Now, success, breakthrough, it's God who enables, it's God who supplies the strength, praise the Lord. Remember the name Uzziah? Uzziah means the Lord is my strength. And so I pray for you that God will supply you with strength. I pray for you that God will supply you with power. And so that you're able to move things. You're able to do things because true and lasting success comes from only God. Remember how he defeated the enemies? He defeated the enemies by God's help. He fought the battles. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, you know, there's the, a the message there. So as you fight your battles, as you move on, may God answer your prayer. Supply you with the strength, my brother, my sister, that success comes from God. We saw David, how he succeeded. He trusted God. We saw many others that have succeeded because they trusted God. Another issue that you need to learn from Uzziah is learn to pray 
diligently. I want using the word diligently and be in obedience to God's commands. There is a disaster in disobeying God. We have seen many personalities in the past and we shall continue seeing them, disobedience. And of course, in the book of Isaiah, the verse that we keep quoting, you obey, you eat the good of the land. You disobey, you are devoured by the devil, by the sword. Now here, learn to pray diligently. And so I invite you to prayer in the morning, whatever moment it is. Because the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. Even as you walk along the road, you are in a taxi, you are at your workplace, you are in a market, you are wherever. The heart, the heart full of prayer will be an open door of God's, you know, blessings, God's favor. So friends, learn to pray diligently. Obey God's commands. Obey God's precepts and he will be with you. One other thing that I've learned from Uzziah is that success or achievement can be lost instantly. True? Yes. Can be lost because Uzziah, 52 years, but listen, due to transgression of pride and feeling of self, you know, up, up, success. I have seen people who have made money. They eat well, they sleep well, they have powerful vehicles, but because they have mismanaged their success, these nice things don't last. And so the question comes back, how do you manage success? How do you manage your successful story? I have seen it happen to me, even during my young years. There was a moment where I, I because I was being number one, number one, number one in the class. So some little pride of a little boy came in that after all, all these, I'm above them. And listen to me. P1, number one, number one, P2, number one, number one, P3. Now, because of the pride that had developed in me, I get to P4. I was brought, I was leveled. Because leaving position number one and going to position number three was, was leveling enough. So I knew that, oh, there can be others that can do better than me. But because of the pride that I developed, so I kept a little boy, very little, by the way, smaller than anyone else in class, but very sharp, I thought. But listen to me, pride, pride, pride goes before a fall. So by the time I realized I was number three and there was trouble for me. Now, friends, even the success story that you have at your work, the success story that you have in your house, the success story that you have in your, in your business, keep level, keep level, praise the Lord. Keep level and keep trusting God. Pray, like we are saying, pray diligently, continue trusting God. Now here, Uzziah, trouble came because he lost instantly. And so friends, may God, who desires humility, Make you know that humility is critical. Humility is important. So that you keep level. Because pride goes before a fall. Now, learn from Uzziah, as I do, that God detests arrogance and pride. It leads to destruction. We have already seen, and in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, he speaks about it, that pride leads to overstepping of boundaries. And so it is not, it's not good. Ask God, friends, to give you the spirit of humility and being thankful, being thankful, being thankful. Without God, we cannot do anything. For we read in John 15, 5, Jesus makes a declaration that without me, there's nothing that you can do. And for me, I know for real, for sure, that any little success that I may attain, 
May God enable me to know that it's not by power, it's not by strength, but by the Spirit of God. So says the Word of God. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by strength, it's not by wisdom, human wisdom, it's not by friends, but it is by the Spirit of God. So I commit to you this personality, Uzziah. Whom Isaiah says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now this is the man who reigned for 52 years and he did very well. Like we read, that actually God prospered him. May he prosper you in the name of God. And as he prospers you, take note that pride goes before a fall. So may God grant you the desire to be, to be humble enough to continue acknowledging him to continue praying to him, to continue trusting in him, to continue, to continue on, whether in private by yourself or in public, but to know that actually God is above all. And may he grant you the desires of your heart. May God keep you. May God provide for you. May God who sustains, sustain you and sustain me to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the name of God the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all of us say, Amen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, Amen. <music>